Welcome again, everybody. In this session, we're going to review the new upgrades to the Vetter DAP, uh, perhaps one of the most um, uh, generous upgrade versions just happened a couple of days ago. And uh, lead dev Jeremy is going to take us through those changes and those upgrades and those improvements to the DAP uh, here today. Uh, so without further ado, I'll hand it over to you, Jeremy. You kind of guide me as I show my screen and we point to things and kind of take everyone through uh, all these exciting new uh, improvements. Okay, thanks, Mike. Yeah, so there were quite a few changes in this uh, in this latest release uh, or upgrades. I shouldn't just say changes. Change is sometimes a bad word to people. <laughs> but yeah, there were a lot of upgrades. Um, starting with, you'll notice uh, on this dashboard, the the interface at the top is a little bit tighter. Now there's a, a little key up there. So, you know, we, we hide away on the top right hand corner. Uh, there's not so much in this upper upper area. So if you're wondering where some of it went, it's, it's underneath that key. Um, and then the little light bulbs that show within each of the boxes are a starting point for us to help new users that are coming into the application know what to do, what things are, etc. So you'll notice right now the ranking and tier areas are the only ones that actually have information filled in so far. And we're still working on the format of it. So right now, you know, the text is kind of, you know, plain and off to the side. Uh, we'll probably be working on, on making that look more um, friendly, more website-like, not just uh, text. So that area you will notice over time will continue to get better and better, especially as we have more uh, information to add into each of the, uh, the boxes. Uh, you'll also notice that there's a promote project button under the calendar. So um, we consider it a, a good thing for uh, any projects out there that want to have a way to promote their, uh, their project on the platform. And we're still in discussions about what exactly that means, but we're starting to collect responses from, from those who, who want to have that type of a collaboration, which can only help further the, the value of the better, better platform as we have more, uh, more people coming in and, and using the platform and having a, a means to you know, highlight their projects in some way. And just to interject on that, we're, you know, this is early stages of development, but we're trying to look for uh, a way to have that benefit, you know, key participants in the community. As many of you know, we've done a lot of sessions with voters, vetters, and scouts who we call all-star voters and all-star vetters and all-star scouts because they've been putting in a lot of time to help make the whole community better and, and putting in a lot of hours, trying to find ways to perhaps have this prom promote project feature lead to them having whitelist opportunities, uh, private sale opportunities with up and coming projects that the community could vet and decide are really, really good. Uh, and also we're trying to find ways that this could generate additional revenue that some of that could go to, uh, you know, rewards and, and things that, that make uh, better better. So uh, anyway, more on that. Obviously, we're just getting that started, but we think that that could be pretty, uh, pretty valuable uh, as Vetter positions itself uh, as a, uh, you know, as a, a major player in the in the research tool space as we go forward. Yeah, thanks, Mike. Um, there are a few things that you don't necessarily see in here, you know, so I, I will mention those as well, you know, as as I think of them and as we're going through through the different areas. But since you just mentioned all-star voters and this concept of, of bringing uh, some efficacy to the voting process, um, we now have it set up so that you, know, you can only vote on a project once. There, there was a way, it was open, people could vote on the same project more than once. They can only vote once during a duration and the durations refer to the 24 hour, seven day, you know, 30 day concept. Uh, they can only vote one time on each duration now. And- um, are you, Jeremy, are you referring to this here? It, it, it's just the, the voting process in general. I, um, but yes, I am referring to that. 
uh, not the numbers, but just in, in general, the, you had mentioned all-star voters. So I wanted to mention that in this release, we have changed it so that when voting occurs, that, um, there's gonna be uh, less ability for people to, to game the system a little bit. Uh, and that's done by only allowing one vote per duration and after the duration has has elapsed. So I just oh, figured, you mean, oh, you mean per project? Yeah, it's kind of hard to visually show that quickly, but you right. you mean uh, on one project, it used to be where somebody could vote like eight times on the same project favorably, which is kind of silly. Correct. And now they can only vote once per time duration. So 24 hour period, they can vote once on a project, project the same project, seven day time frame, they can vote once. 30 day time frame once, all time time frame once, correct? Yes, exactly. Okay, okay. yeah, that's good. And in that in that same process, of, because we've had some prior meetings with, with all star voters, et cetera. So during that process, we've also lowered the number of scout votes as you're showing here, the number of uh, better votes that are paid, et cetera. So during the time where we're trying to get everything under control and, and bring some efficacy to the system, you'll see some changes in these, these areas. Yeah, and, ju and just to just to make sure everybody knows, because I know it was a big point of uh, of interest and concern for some people, uh, we, you know, the, the amount that is paid from the veteran participatory pool for voting, vetting, and scouting has been reduced. All but uh, actually, purple scouting was increased, but the rest were decreased along the same lines of what Jeremy was just referencing. So we could reel in the integrity, the efficacy on on the scout posts, the voting, that's the next stage of this. The first stage was just to get it launched and to get people using it uh, in every possible way to work out kinks and stuff. But the second stage is increasing the integrity of the voting, the integrity of the scouting, the integrity of the vetting. And so while we're in that process, uh, and so because we, you know, and we knew this would happen initially, a lot of people were cheating some people were exactly cheating, but you could say gaming the system and doing things that were not providing value. They might just like, for example, vote eight times on the same post to get paid a bunch of vetter, but that doesn't really add value to the project. It just kind of drains the vetter pool. So while we're, you know, we've already addressed that, as Jeremy just said, you can only vote once on a project per time frame. There's a number of things, though, that we're doing to increase efficacy uh, of all that. We knew that this would be chapter two to this process and we're now there and we're excited that we're there. Just wanted to say like, while we're doing that, we lowered a lot of these payments uh, so we can literally blacklist people that were cheating. There were some people that were just downright cheating. Like they would be working with a group of people, they would make a post and they would a bunch of people would vote on it incorrectly that it was a positive project. We have mechanisms to catch all that and we're blacklisting that and we're creating admin tools to speed up the process of catching that. So that the, that's why you now see uh, right here, there's a red, someone's red on the, on the, on the calendar uh, because auditing is now coming into play. And you're gonna see more and more of that of, of purple, greens, beiges, red, you know, the color coded ranking reflecting things. I just, we'll probably get into some of that. I don't know today, but I just wanted to say these numbers have also changed on what's being paid right now as we reel in all of that, as we address and audit all of those issues. And part of that, as Jeremy was saying, was uh, reducing the amount of time somebody can vote per day, just to have more time for us to catch any cheating or gaming of the system that doesn't add value to the project. Yeah, thanks for that, Mike. Um, and there were, there's quite a few changes kind of in the, uh, the background that I won't go through in detail all of them, but there, there were times where the gains and tips section, for example, would end up flowing down and, and flowing out of the, the black box. So little things like that get cleaned up so it looks better. Uh, you can click anywhere along that line to see which project uh, is being referred to. And you'll notice that that takes him right to the project and now that back button up to the left of the name will actually bring him back to the dashboard instead of the calendar. Like it remembers uh, where you were. So it can get you back to where you were, which is nice. Super uh, cool. So now so I just want to reiterate how cool that is that you can now go see and review the actual project that somebody is claiming to have made these huge gains on. Uh, username maker of beer is reporting a 30X today 
and he tipped somebody 30,000 better. How cool is it that we can now go look at the actual project? Uh, how, how cool is that to be able to learn, you know, what to be looking for, for a point of discussion and a point of reference? I mean, it's pretty awesome. Yeah, so that ability to to go to a particular page, and you'll notice when when you went to that page, Mike, it showed in the URL that it was that specific project. That was something that was released in the last set of releases, so a project slash a hash. That so there's a representation for every single project. So now, you know, we mentioned this before that people can link directly to a project. So if this was a project that had a Telegram, they might in their Telegram channel have a pointer back to our application uh, using that special link. Well, in this release, we have also added the ability to have um, the users, the, the profiles, a version of the user profile available. So if you look under team stats, all of those avatars, just as an example, are clickable. So if you click on one of those avatars, it now takes you to user slash hash page. So you have the ability to see a little bit about the activity of that person, what what projects do they have on their watch list, right? So not all of the details that you'll see in your own profile will be there, but a lot of really useful information, which is leading more towards something that we don't have yet, which is the favoriting of people. Some of the tier four um, features that, that we wanna make sure people have access to, this gets us one step closer to being able to do some of those features like following a person, being able to know what they post, being able to know what they favorite, right? So those are future enhancements that this ability to link directly to a user helps us move towards. And yeah, the I, other advantage to that is anybody who say is an influencer, a YouTuber, et cetera, they can actually have a link directly to their page on this site. So that's pretty cool. Yeah, so just real quickly, so, if somebody has an influence on YouTube or an influence in a Telegram channel out there, they, you know, what we're setting up is a framework for discussions to begin to ensue about projects, maybe they 10X or they 5X. And imagine like multiple people who are using that are starting to have those discussions and they can just refer people to their profile for someone to be able to assess all the projects they did and how well they did. And th so those that do good and develop a good reputation you know, it's really going to become a valuable resource and they're going to want to send people here because the more people who follow them, because that's going to be a feature coming, the more people who follow them um, who are, you know, really serious about this, it's going to increase the number of tips that they get. So they're going to want to get their profile page out there and show people, you know, the types of projects they've done. One quick question I do have, uh, Jeremy, is under gains and tips, is it, is it like in the short term possible? that when someone clicks on this username or this username, it goes to the profile instead of to the project. And then when somebody clicks on, you know, maybe um, here, it goes to the project. I, I just, I asked that because I would be, it would be super valuable if I could see like uh, this person who got a 30,000 uh, 30, better tip, warrior2179. Like I'm super curious to, you know, if I could click on that and go to their profile, and see like, is that, have they been helping people get a lot of wins? You know what I mean? Like I could, if I could go to their profile like this and see the projects that they've done, uh, you know, it'd be cool because I might want to follow them. Yeah, that's actually on the list. It's just not completed yet, but we definitely will be adding that. Awesome, very cool. Go ahead. Okay. Um... Another kind of a, a nice feature is on the calendar. If you want to go to the calendar uh, itself, you'll notice that all of the um, filters at the top are, are currently white. And we did change when somebody was using the advanced filter, it would turn green uh, to let you know that something was selected in there. And we still have when, say, a network is selected, we do change that text to show that. We're now also showing those in green. So now at a glance, you can quickly see that there are filters set. Um, so that's a nice little uh, advanced feature is, is being able to know which ones are selected just at a glance, not, not having to even read the text to, to notice that the color has changed. It's awesome. 
And you can always still hit the X on the far right and, and get rid of all of the filters and go back to viewing everything if you'd like. Awesome. That was added. And also, um, I, I can't remember right now if it was part of this release or the last one. There's so many changes going on all the time. But if you click on week view or day view or list view, um, right below add project, you'll see that the these views have been updated as well. And rather than showing a more button at the bottom, they'll actually detail out all of the projects on that day. So the week is very similar to the, the month view, but you'll notice that for the given week, you can scroll down and see the names of all of the projects displayed, which is kind of nice. You don't have to use that little pop-up and try to navigate. And now because you, we have the ability to show each project as its own page, you could um, you can have more than one of the projects up at a time and be able to compare them. So I know that was a feature that a lot of people were, were what, asking for. What's an example? Like, hey, can I show, how would I show that? Uh, you're on a Macintosh. I don't know the keystrokes. I know for me, if I hold down control and click on one, it'll open in a new page, but I think you can right click on it and say, open in a new tab. So you're saying like, there's a way to have this open and then also an, another window of another one open. Correct. Now, if you open in another window, you'll have to just hit connect wallet real quick, but you'll be on that project on any of them that you open. Yeah. So, so someone will have to kind of investigate that on a Mac because usually, yeah, I would be able to click here and it would say open a new tab, but it's just saying back forward reload. Right. So uh, someone might let me know how to do that. So you could kind of compare. So you could open this and then a PC it sounds like it's easier at this time. You could open this and have a bunch of them, another one open and another one open like and compare information on the projects. Yep, exactly. Awesome. So now let's go to the profile view. We'll show what has changed there. You'll see it looks a lot different than it did in the past. Uh, we have a menu along the left that's specific just to this page. So it's the, the sub menu for the profile. So you can quickly get to watch list projects, votes, tips. Uh, you'll notice there is a votes section here, which is not visible when you look at somebody else's page. There are gonna be certain things that are are public that are shared on the page when somebody else views your profile. And there are certain things that only you see uh, when you go to your own profile. So along the top, um, we tried to use more of a, a wide format. So originally, you know, we had uh, the boxes that showed that the various projects were in, you know, four or five columns. Uh, they were tiny, they were small boxes. So um, the boxes that we have now under watch list, for example, shows a nice large box that gives a, a preview of the project itself. So I'm actually down two boxes. I'm, I'm getting are we looking here at here. watch list. Are we looking at watch list? Yeah. yeah. So in order to compare to what was there in the past, um, we didn't have all the stuff at the top. So what I wanted to mention was what we had in the past was a list of projects. You, you had your drafts, your what was in your approved, et cetera. All of it is still here. And as we're going through this page real quick, you'll see where all of it shows. I just wanted to mention though, that as each project is listed, there's a lot more information about each project now than, than in the past. So we can come back to that. Um, but it, just so you know, everything is still here things may have just been uh, rearranged from what you're used to. So, so let's go through the page a little more in detail so you know exactly what is here. So the first box is ranks. So it's just a little bit of a different view from the dashboard where the ranks are the, you know, the circle indicator. These are boxes that fill up as you get to um, 100 because all of the ranks are zero to 100. As you get to 100, the box fills up. If you have not reached the level, then it'll kind of show where you're at. Uh, you can see on the far right in durations how half of the bar is gray and half the bar is yellow. That's the same, uh, same way to look under ranks uh, if you have not reached the, the top of the rank. And then the color indicator does give you some help to know uh, what color. Uh, Mike's looks a little bit interesting because he is an admin, so it's just showing 100s, even though his color's not 
not purple, just so you know, right. uh, you'll actually see your appropriate uh, color. And then the, the tokens used to be in the, you know, the black bar that's under it. Now it's broken into a little bit more visual display that can show you, you know, where you're at in the four tiers. So in this case, Mike has enough to have the entire blue bars all the way on all four tiers filled in. Uh, if you only had enough tokens to be, say, uh, three and a half, you're halfway to tier four, then half of tier three would be filled in. That's cool. The activity section shows how many times you have personally scouted projects, uh, vetted projects, or voted. Uh, that information is available and you're, you're seeing somebody else's uh, page, their activity, so you can see how active they are in the platform. And then the durations, uh, the far right box, that breaks out uh, on an avatar, there are th three colors around the circle, and then there's the four bars, right? So you can see his avatar on the far left hand side uh, has the two yellow and the one purple around the circle, and then it has the four bars. Those four bars have always represented during a given duration, any projects that you have uh, scouted or assumed, how they have been rated by the voting process in the specific duration. So the far left box is the 24 hour, the second box is the seven day, the third box is the 30 day, and the fourth box is the overall. So that just kind of gets broken out over on that far right hand side into uh, a more specific uh, ranking for each of those durations. So you can see there the 24 hour, seven day, 30 day overall, and it'll show where you're at in each of those durations, which can be different than your main rank because your main rank is what, that's the rank that you get paid upon. That's your current ranking. The durations themselves are a little bit of a different ranking system that says overall, how, how many votes have you received in those specific durations? And by the way, Jeremy, the main rank for Scout is right here in the upper right-hand corner of the circle, correct? Correct. Scout is on the upper right, vetting is in the upper left, and voting is the bottom of the circle. We'll have a little key showing that somewhere on the site soon. Yeah, that'll be inside of that little um, light bulb here, and it'll also be on the profile page. It'll we'll, we'll detail it out a little bit better, and Jeremy, probably within ranks and durations. Uh, this section here in the upper right corner, durations. Did do, do I remember correctly? The other day you told me that that was intended and and will be moved here to go after ranks since it has to do with ranks. Or... Yeah, that was that's one of the changes I just didn't get uh, put into place before we released. But not, yeah, I wanted big... them to be next to each other because it makes more sense. It's not a big deal. Yeah, I was just thinking when you were going through this, it just yeah, it made sense that way. And I thought you'd said that. Okay, cool. And I'll also mention there there is some confusion I've seen in some of the questions out there about durations and ranking and uh, and whatnot. It has nothing to do with the vetting. It is only to do with scouting. So the the color that you'll see for vetting is whatever their current uh, color is. It doesn't break that out into different durations. Uh, when somebody votes on your vetted post, they don't even pick a, a duration. It's just, was it helpful or was it not? So I just want to make that clear. Durations and this, um, those four different categories only is involved with the votes that you've received on your uh, scouting posts or the posts that you've assumed. And Jeremy, if I could, the reason for that is because when someone's vetting a project, they're adding additional information, but they're not saying in any way, uh, we don't want the system to have to indicate from voting in any way that that vetter who is vetting the project, providing additional information um, needs to be voted for positively or negatively based on the success or failure of that project. We wanted a vetter to come in after seeing maybe a, sco a scout posted a project, we wanted a vetter to come in and just provide a lot of additional information that would be useful for research purposes without feeling like, oh, I better not vet this because if it fails, I'm gonna be downvoted. Like we want them to feel really comfortable coming and adding whatever additional information would be useful to a researcher looking at that project. However, with scouts, the purpose was 
first to provide an index of projects that are launching and to provide a ranking system to indicate does that scout have a successful track record or a track record of not a lot of success or somewhere in between when they decide to post a ranked project you know a project under you know ranked on the uh, on the on the calendar the whole point of voting and the ranking system for scouts is very different we want them to be posting good projects and to do their best to learn how to post good projects on the platform so you can go to the calendar and just look for purple or green uh, for example, and narrow your, the amount of time it takes to be looking at projects that, you know, have a more likelihood of being worth looking at, because there's lots of telegram groups and lots of places you can go to, like, for example, DXL has a list of a bunch of junk projects launching a whole bunch of coin sniper there's a bunch of websites with a bunch of projects that are launching but there's no uh, integrity process in place so that those are you have any you have any way of knowing if those are being posted by people who are posting projects that are going to be good or not the scout ranking system was set up for the first time you know ever to have a research tool that does that that, that gives you an indication of whether that scout has a successful track record or not of posting projects but the vetters that's not what the vetting is about the vetting is to per, for them to be encouraged to provide additional information and insight. And we didn't want a vetter to not post a vetted post because they're looking at a project going, you know what, I don't think this is going to be a success. We want them to be able to come in and say, hey, I use this auditing tool and uh, it doesn't look good, guys, just my two cents. But here's here's what I'm seeing. And we didn't want the voting, you know, negatively because the project failed we didn't want that to stop the vetter from sharing that information. So voting on scouting is, has a very different purpose than voting on a vetter. Yeah, thanks, oh, Mike. And that's oh, also, yeah. okay, go. No, as I say, hopefully that helps. <laughs> it, you know, I, I'm trying to clarify, and sometimes I, uh, I'm concerned that I make it even more confusing, but it's extreme, uh, yeah. it's extremely uh, useful. I, I, you know, it's, it's, it's massively helpful to be able to, to have those two different systems in place. Yeah, yeah, my first project I vetted was a rug pull and I was just checking everything out and I happened to see it and I, my, my vetter spidey sense went off. And so I vet it and, and I did get uh, votes on it that it was useful. So I, I can see how, what you're saying. Um, would be okay, but, but you would have been afraid to vet it if you thought that votes would indicate if it was a failure you would get a down vote obviously we wanted right, we right. wanted you to vet it we wanted you to say hey i have some concerns and here's why right uh, and have people go upvote you and say wow that ended up failing that was a rug pull thank you thank you for that vetted project but with scouts it's different we don't want a scout posting a ranked you know a project to the calendar unless they feel it's going to be a success. And so that voting is based of a scout is based on the success or failure of the project. Uh, anyway, yeah, go ahead. We'll not get you out of flow here too much, Jeremy. Yeah, no, it's perfect. I, I appreciate that. Um, so then the next bar, the next area kind of gives indicators of the, the level that you're at. You know, if you are a vetter, it would show up here, uh, for example. So that provides some useful information. There's also additional information that may show up there. For example, if you're part of the royalty pools, if you've made it to green scout level or above uh, and the royalties are distributed, that is where you would go is within that box right there. There would be a claim button. And as long as you're at least tier three, you're able to claim those royalties, which if you made it to green scout to do scouting, um, you can actually scout projects at earlier than tier three you, know, you just have to be tier three for the voting process but it, it does require that you're at tier three in order to claim the uh, the rewards so you cannot post a ranked post prior to tier three anyway so when you're tier three as a scout that's the first time you can actually post the project as ranked where you can actually receive votes so just want to make that clear but that's where you would go is inside of that that box and then to the far right there's the edit profile button 
So the edit profile button is where you can go to change information like your email address and, and other, there's additional details in there, but it's mainly the place that you would go in order to change the name that you use on the site and the, the two letters that you use as part of your avatar. Um, you'll notice uh, it, it asks for, anytime you're going to add information to the site, it's gonna ask you to provide that passcode. And that's one of the things that that's new. You don't just have to go right to provide passcode in the upper right hand corner. It'll just ask for it if needed when you're about to post information to the site. So that's why that little lock up there in the top right is is there is because you don't necessarily have to enter your passcode unless it's needed for some reason for security. Uh, and that would be a case if you're changing your username, we consider that a secure event, you'd have to provide a passcode. So with that, I'll say, so the next sections, there's a number of different sections, the watch list, projects, votes, and tips so far. I will say there are additional sections that are coming. You know, this is not uh, all inclusive. This is not the end for the profile. This is a starting point. So uh, the only things that were here before is what's in now, what's considered my projects at this point was all that you would have found on your profile uh, in the older system. And Jeremy, I'm looking for maybe another example that might have some other um, things filled in, like my projects. There we go. Okay. Go Perfect. ahead. Yeah, a lot more here. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, we'll, we'll have to come back to yours to show votes because that won't show on, on theirs, but that's okay. Okay. So I'm going to skip watch list for one second. Let's talk about my projects first because we had my projects in the old system. You do have the ability to use a search bar to look through the projects that you've posted. So he picked John A 100 X, who is somebody who has posted quite a few projects. They have uh, 87 approved projects so far. So that number is based upon what is selected to the right. And you can see in green approved is what is selected. So you have other options. You can see your pending projects, those that are waiting upon admin approval. You can see verifying projects. Those are the ones that you've submitted that have not been verified on the blockchain yet to be approved. There's also a couple more under the three dots, one of which is drafts. And then um, oh, it cuts it off uh, because there's no projects. Click on approved for a second so that I'll note that as a bug. Interesting. Maybe it's Macintosh versus, I'm so normally you'd see two options there. One is drafts. I'm gonna hit refresh just really quick just to see if it was something on my end. Okay. And here we go. I know on my screen, I'm actually able to see both options. Yeah. One so is drafts and then there's another one which is those that have been rejected or um, uh, basically the deleted pile. Gotcha. So I'll, we'll make a note here of, at least on your system, that that's not showing all of the options, which is not right. good. So if there are too many options, then the three dots are added to add additional options. So uh, if we need to, we can we can share my screen in a minute if we really want to show that. But that's the idea. That's, so, I think that's okay. Yeah. Makes yeah. sense. So you can see projects that that you've entered into the system, whether they have launched or not. So the launched ones are the ones you may want to go back and see, you know, how the voting has gone on that project, for example. So you'd be able to come in and, and see, and you can actually click on the project name if you wanted to go specifically to the project. Uh, awesome. And you can go down and, and see the votes on your project. That's awesome. If you hit the back button, you'll notice it sends you right back to your profile and you know, reloads that information. But you can now, because we've added so much details to the project tab, you can see the votes right there. You can see the tips. You can see uh, how many people have favorited that project, et cetera. You can see what strategy, some of the, the general information is available right here in a quick glance. So you don't have to pull up the full view of the project necessarily. And then that also leads to, you'll notice next to the telegram, next to the website, next to the smart contract address, uh, there are clickable buttons now. So this is here by popular demand. 
Uh, there are reasons why I don't think it's necessarily the greatest thing to do, but people want to be able to click through and get out. So what we did as a compromise is we brought up this warning page. It says, by the way, you're, you're leaving better. Here is the full URL. Make sure it's going to the place that you think you're going to, right? That's the general idea there is that you see the full URL and, and you can decide, do I want to navigate there? It is possible if you navigate to that, you know, we don't have control over what people enter for a website address. So they could be leading you to a page that has viruses on it. Like we don't know. I just want to point, I want to point out the same as the case on Facebook, right? Like if you're going to Facebook and someone made a post and they put a link on there, it could also go to a malicious site. So it's not like <clears throat> this is a unique risk here. It's just Jeremy likes to set things up to protect people as much as possible. Exactly. So you can get to the website. You can also get to the Telegram link. And then um, with the smart contract address, so at least with, the, uh, with BSC and as we start adding them with the other networks as well, you'll notice that, uh, so before you click, if you hover over the actual contract address itself, Mike, and click on that, that will show the full contract address. If you hover over the first button that's after it, that will show you a link to BSC scan to go look at the code of the contract. Cool. And then the third one is a link to PooCoin as a means to actually go out and see the chart for the project. So where we can, we, we are providing links out to the contracts. And, and again, people provide those contract addresses. We, you know, there's no way to know whether it's the, the right smart contract address, unfortunately, but you know, we show it to you and you can link out to it and you can see it. And the advantage to being able to go to PooCoin, for example, for BSC projects, is those who are voting wanna be able to look at the chart before they do voting and, and be able to see it. So now, rather than have to copy the address and go paste it into another window, you at least have a way to get to it. Uh, Jeremy, you might be getting to this. I just wanted to ask in case uh, where it says favorited, are you gonna cover what that means? Yeah, actually, this is a good time for that. So you'll notice on the right of the project, there's a number of hearts and those are clickable. So you have the ability to favorite a project and, and watch it. Oh, you mean to the right of this right here? Where it says uh, you, you showed the right thing. So oh, oh, you meant a number of them as in all of these. Right. So there is a heart on every project. So people have the ability to favorite them. So what this is doing, that favorited, so number five in the middle that you're referring to, that is saying that five people so far have gone to Astroverse and clicked on that heart and said, this is a project that I am interested in that I'm following for whatever reason. Which means they can easily find it here in their profile at any time, all their favorited projects. Right. Now, if they favorite a project, that's the watch list. So let's go up to the watch list real quick. And let's talk about that real quick. That's why this heart's highlighted, right? Over here. Right. Here. Yeah. So in this case, John A has favorited retail pay for whatever reason. So under uh, the tabs on the right, you can see all favorites has launched, launchable, uh, future. Sorry. Go ahead. And I voted scouting is another tab up there. So the whole point of watch list is to show these different concepts of things that I'm, I'm looking for. So if you favorite a project, it'll show up in all favorites. If you favorited a project and it has already launched, then it'll show up under has launched. And now you know, okay, I can go out and I should be able to now vote on, on that project and say how well I, how well it did. Launch a bull is saying that that's a project that, is past the launch time, but for whatever reason, the smart contract address has not been put in yet. Uh, so you can't vote on it yet, but it, it gives you an indicator of projects that, that should be launching um, soon or you know should already be launched. And then future is saying, we have not reached the launch date yet. So if you're just looking at your, your watch list to say what's coming, you can use that, that future tab. It could future though also mean uh, no launch date was ever given? Yes, it will mean that. 
Yeah. So we might we might come up with a new term for this. Uh, it's tough because often it means these are the projects that you know are on your, are on your watch list that you favorited. That um, uh, as Jeremy just said, that have a launch date, but they just that date hasn't come yet. So it's like a new project, but it also could mean nobody ever entered in uh, a launch date. So it can't be launched. <laughs> so we're still trying to think of the best way to put name that tab to, to reflect that. Yeah, I may have spoken to you, so I'm not sure that future includes those yet, but that was the intention. Okay. So maybe it's better to distinguish the two. Like I would love to, if I am I following something, I'd love to be able to see projects that you know that have a launch date and they just haven't happened yet like that's where i would be going going the most like when i come here i'd be going straight to that because those are projects i'm watching that have are upcoming right their launch yep but i might want to see that separately from projects i i added to my watch list but there's no launch date associated with that event so it could have happened like last month you know and, or it might be new right it's a little bit more work for me to try to figure out what's going on with those. <clears throat> anyway, I don't know, you know, obviously a million things to discuss and do with every little thing that is decided on this thing, but just wanted to mention that. Yeah, no, thank you. And and I will mention that, so the one that's to the right of that, the I voted scouting, it, it's hard sometimes to come up with good names <laughs> for the tag, right. but that's the first of potentially many new tabs that this is why it's called the watch list not like the favorite list the, the whole point of the watch list are are things to be brought to your attention so the i voted scouting is really an example of that where it's an implied watch list where those are the projects that you have voted on and you may want to then be able to go back to those projects later. You notice it says voted in the 24 hour period on those projects in the little box on the bottom of the, the project bar. You'll have more indicators in there. If you scouted the project, it would show that. If you vetted the project, it would show that. If you voted on the project, it shows which durations you have voted on. So it's, it's kind of implied that if you voted on that project ever, you may want to come back and continue following it. You may want to vote on other durations in the future. So that's another kind of watch list. And there may be other ones that we have. So say when we have tier four, um, the ability to um, follow a person as opposed to a project, you might have a couple of tabs on there that says, you know, projects somebody you're following have posted you might have another listing that shows projects that the person that you're following or one of the people you're following um, have favorited, right? So there's there's different things that may appear over time. So just kind of watch. I just, I just want to add just to really crystallize that or uh, that uh, the number of projects that people you're following have indicated that they're um, getting into. That they're that they're taking part in that they're participating in because uh, there could be a little thing that someone checks off saying hey i'm participating in this to let their followers know this is what i'm participating in and uh you could see that that as well right so you might have a follower participation tab and, and those are the projects that you would see there I so mean, I, it's going to get to the point guys where you know i'm just going to come here and i'm going to come to the watch list and I'm going to click on show me everybody that I'm following that I already know because they've been purple over and over again and people have been tipping them over and over again, which I saw here. And so I'm following them and I'm just going to go straight there <clears throat> and I'm going to look at show me everything that they indicated they're participating in today. And that's all I'm going to look at. It's wildly valuable. Yep, exactly. So, so keep an eye on the watch list area. There, there's going to be you know, more tabs added over time uh, in that area, and they will get more and more useful over time. And each one of these sections has a search bar, by the way. So that search bar is related to, it's kind of in the middle between watch list and the all favorites. That's related to the project names more than anything. It's not, it's not as expansive as the search bar that's on the calendar, just so you know. Uh, the calendar, you, you can put in all kinds of different things to, to search and, and filter the calendar by. This is really just a way to say, okay, there's, you know, 97, in this case, entries in the list. So 
you know, rather than try to find something specific, you might just hit the, the search bar and be able to find it quickly. Awesome. If you type moon into that search bar, you'll see that it quickly starts limiting which projects are available. Now you're down to just two, Retro Moon and Moon Collector, you know. Yeah, that's actually really helpful because I can imagine I'm following a lot of projects. I kind of remember, you know, I might have a lot in here. I might kind of remember part of the name, right? Of what I'm looking for and I can just start typing it, it pops up. Right. Cool. So we've covered watch list, we've covered projects. Um, we can cover tips as well. So there's received tips and there's also sent tips. So you, you get an idea for, for that. When you're looking at your own page, by the way, there's more tabs that break it into the different durations. So you can look at 24 hours versus 30 days, or thir yeah, 30 days, et cetera. Uh, but when you're looking at somebody else's page, it's just received and, uh, and sent. I'll go so look at the, I'll go look at this admins uh, profile to see what you mean. So under tips, it says received and sent right here. Right. Right. Because that's, I'm looking at, this isn't really mine, but in admins, it, it's acting as if it's mine at the moment. So what I'm referring to is the vote section. So now that you can see your votes. Oh, here, you got gotcha. you. Gotcha, yeah. In the voting area, you, you actually have the different durations instead of just received and sent. So now if you click the three dots to the right of the votes, hopefully we can see yours. Now we can't. So the ones that are shown all 24 hour, seven day, 30 day overall, those are for the received votes. And then in the drop list, there's similar options for all of the ones that you have sent or sent within each of those durations. So that's really the only difference between the votes section and the, and the tip section is the amount of um, filtering that you can do and, and be able to narrow down the ones you want to look at. Awesome. I'm going to go back to, I yep. think it was on John's, uh, John A100X, uh, just to show that little difference. So now we're looking at somebody else's. And if I go to, where's his votes? I don't you see. You can't see someone else's. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Votes. Right. That was your point. Yeah. So, but you can see, so the tips will show whether there was a gain or not. It'll show who it came from. It'll show how much you actually received. So 72, most likely that was a 100 better tip. And you actually get 72 because of the you know taxes on, on tips. But so it shows you how much you actually should have received, how long ago it was, et cetera. So it's all detailed there and you can see it all. And um, we don't have the ability to show your your votes Mike. although you do have sent votes if you go to your profile and click on oh well, before before we do that i just want to you know i i have to, i try to underscore because i know you know even with me when i'm looking at something like this for the first time it might take me a while to fully grasp how powerful this is going to be we're just laying the foundation for these tools being introduced for the first time i just want to emphasize like if you see here john a uh, John A100X and look at his tips, he has 48 tips and I'll just scroll down, you know, and a lot of them are smaller, but you got a 722, um, you know, we saw a 30,000 one that was done today uh, somewhere. I don't know if that was on John A, I think that was to somebody else. Here's 7,216 Vetter. And imagine if Vetter were to 10X, 100X, like this is insane. And, and I just want, as we're scrolling down and looking at that, just keep in mind, imagine what it's gonna be like when we have the follow feature and you have like this loyal following, someone like me following John A, and then going to my watch list and seeing everything that he's getting involved with. And, uh, you know, and he's doing it, he continues to do a good job right now. He's at purple. He maintains something like that. His following can grow into the hundreds of people and then the thousands of people. And imagine like how many tips he's going to get each day. He's not going to just have 48 total. He's going to have like 48 tips a day or more, hundreds of tips a day. On sometimes a project might do well if he's got thousands of followers. He's going to have thousands of independent tips a day, ranging from seven better to 30,000 better. Like it's going to be crazy, guys. But we're just building the foundation for all of this right now. Anyway, sorry, I just, I, I get excited because I obviously see like what, you know, what all this is going to be able to be for people, uh, but we have to build the tools first. So <laughs> good, 
Go ahead. Yeah, before we switch off of, of here, you'll notice that the two boxes at the very top, yeah, sorry, you were there. Yeah. Those two boxes are different than what you see on your own profile. Instead of tiers and activity, you see social and activity. Wait, where are we, where are we looking? Oh, right here, social and activity, yep. gotcha. So you'll notice from a social standpoint, it's given more information about how many votes they've received, how many tips they've they've received, et cetera. So um, awesome. it just kind of gives an indicator of, of how active that person is in, in the platform and activity wise, yeah. scoutings, vettings, votes are, are it's kind of useful to know that they're what they're doing and and how active they are. It, when you get to the point where you can favorite somebody that will be helpful information to know. Absolutely. And, and by the way, you don't have to be at tier four. You're not going to have to be at tier four to favorite anybody. Uh, I think it's set at five, right? Like at tier three, you'll be able to favorite five, uh, or, or sorry, not favorite, but follow five people. It's just, if you want to have like an unlimited amount of people that you follow, then you'd go to tier four. Yeah. And actually the favoriting of projects is working that way. Uh, tier three allows five favorited projects and Tier four is unlimited favoriting. Awesome. So I, I guess the um, the favoriting of people will kind of work the same way. And, and guys, that's a marketing decision, but we will be getting input from the community on a, a lot of those things. Uh, you know, we're just getting the basic foundation set up, seeing how people are using it, using it ourselves with the foundation. And these are new upgrades that just happened a couple of days ago that are imperative to this scaling the way that we envision it to, uh, you know, we're just getting all the foundational tools in place uh, to, to, and then we'll get input from you guys as you start to see just how powerful all this is. Uh, and then we'll, you know, make final decisions on the marketing in the, in these regards, like for example, what tier do you have to be to follow, et cetera. We'll start to have community discussions. We're just getting the tools out there first so that people can wrap their heads around how it's going to work so they can weigh in and help us make those kinds of, you know, give us good input on those kind of decisions. And so if you don't see the heart, get to at least tier three because you want to use that feature. <laughs> exactly. So I, I will mention while we're here as well, the reason why votes, the detailed votes are not shown when you look at somebody else's project is because one of the, um, one of the decisions that came from the community was this idea of downvoting being anonymous because people felt like they were less likely to downvote a project if the person knew who they were. So voting itself um, is very needed for this project, right? It's very needed for the platform. Voting is a very important aspect of, of being able to know, you know, should somebody rightfully be at purple rank, which is really hard to get to, or should they be at a red rank? Right. You can't get to red if there's no downvoting. Everybody would eventually be purple. So one of the measures that was put in place was the concept of anonymous downvotes. Well, if you can see every vote any person ever did, you would see their downvotes. And therefore, you can figure out that, oh, they downvoted on my project. You know, there, there's a way to figure that out. So that's why the voting was reserved to the, own, the person's own profile. So if you don't mind going to back to your profile, Mike, and go down to the votes area, and then click on the three dots, and hopefully you can select that top option, which is sent. Yeah, so now you can actually see four votes that, that you did. You know, sorry, we're showing one as a down vote as inappropriate, but that's the idea. You wouldn't want, in general, people to be able to, to know that that's you know, uh, who voted on your project in order to, to maintain the anonymous concept. So that's why votes don't show up in general. And just, and just, just so you guys know, in case anyone caught what this was, I believe, you know, I, I use this sometimes for testing and I believe this was an incorrect vote during testing. So just so you know, this is not, we're looking at an admin account that's, obvious, that's often used for beta testing and stuff. So uh, I think that was that time where um, when we first launched a feature and uh, this um, uh, this vote was intended for another one and, and went to this one. So that was during testing phase, just so you guys know. Right. So at least you can see a little example of what it looks like here. Um, you've got you know, the project that, that you voted on and whether you upvoted 
or downvoted? Uh, did you vote on a scout project or was it on a vetting project? And then if it was on a scouting project, what duration did you vote on that project? So it's awesome. Yeah, I mean, I just, I'm just kind of blown away. Like, you know, obviously this is what Vetter was intended to become, but as we see these new upgrades, I mean, we, like, we only have like, uh, there's only 38 people on this call because we've had so many calls this month and we didn't really notify people of this call. We just wanted to, you know, give people a chance to be here last minute because we could have, we were just going to record this overview of these features, like just between ourselves and just share it. But I decided to go ahead and invite people. But I just want you guys to know, like those of you that are here live right now or they're catching this replay early, like anyone who listens and even understands 50% of what we covered realizes that we're serious about creating a badass research tool that has the potential to just crush the market because it, it's bringing integrity to shilling, which there has been none. <laughs> and when you can, if you can bring integrity to the shilling and actually have a system in place where it legitimately and consistently is pointing you to the people and you can follow them who are consistent at picking projects at 10X, 2X, 100X, uh, obviously it, it's like that, the value of that is insane. Uh, and, and it's exactly what this is. Obviously it's early stages, but I mean, this is a lot already developed in a couple of months from conception. Uh, so Jeremy, just seriously, like this is really impressive. And I just, I, you know, I'm not quite sure why this is, but even though we've been, you know, your team, the dev team uh, has been one of the fastest I've ever seen in the BSC space in particular, not, not to mention the entire crypto world, the fastest at implementing usable application uh, you know, of crypto. For some reason, we don't get a lot of accolades. You guys don't get a lot of accolades for that, 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 for that fact. Um, but I just want to say right now, I'm extremely impressed and excited to use this. Again, still early stages, guys, but I mean, anyone that's here uh, has to realize that there's just nothing out there like it. Uh, we were just talking in the last call earlier today, uh, Market Move has created an awesome product uh, for auditing, uh, auditing contracts. So we're going to be able to partner <clears throat> and use those kinds of tools that we're having the community right now, test it, use it. We're getting the word out, you know, use it. If it's consistently coming back as a useful tool, we'll integrate that into the vetting process. Anything out there that's created in the crypto space that's useful for researching projects can get utilized and, and, and integrated into the vetter process. But there's nothing out there uh, that's designed like the kinds of features that were just added, this whole, this whole system. There's nothing else out there even attempting to validate and bring integrity and efficacy to the shilling process. Even though shilling's happening everywhere, people are promoting and pitching, do this project's gonna take 10X, this project's gonna 100X, but there's nothing out there that even comes close uh, to how this is allowing you to, to cut the noise down, to save thousands of hours a year and actually know who to, to listen to, not to, on what to invest into, because it's not financial advice and they're not financial advisors, but, but to have the blockchain validate what their historic success or failure track record was. And again, we're still getting the integrity and efficacy in place. Right now, if you look at the calendar, uh, I think there's only one red one so far because everybody was afraid to vote. I have it on purple only right now. Uh, and we can't, we're not yet able to sort just reds because we didn't think there'd be a use for that, but maybe, maybe we'll decide there's a reason for that. But right now you see one red project here. Like I expect to see as we get the voting auditing in place, now that we've made it anonymous, so you can downvote projects that didn't perform well without people knowing you downvoted, that was causing a lot of people not to downvote a lot. And we have other things coming that will provide incentives to vote who, those who are voting properly. So for example, if somebody's voting 100% that a project's always successful, like that's not very valuable to the system. So we're gonna have rewards for those 
that vote more proportionate to what's more realistic. There's gonna be all kinds of things we're about ready to put in place that will bring massive integrity. That's chapter two to all of this. Um, I mean, it, anyone that's here listening to this on the live or the replay must see and know that there's few things in the research world on crypto that could make the claim of being more valuable once we get the voting integrity and all these tools set up where you can just know that what someone's historic success track record is and know to, you could just sort for those, follow them, see which ones they're getting involved with, see their, 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 their history and save massive time identifying the 10 X's and hundred X's. Like it's wildly valuable beyond, <laughs> beyond description. And there's nothing like that. It's crazy. Uh, and and, and uh, that's exactly what, what, what we're building. So it's, it's pretty exciting. And I just want to, just want to publicly congratulate you again, Jeremy, you and the team, the dev team are doing a fantastic job. Uh, we just don't hear that enough. Uh, it's absolutely, absolutely incredible how fast you guys did this. Thank you. I'll, I'll pass that on to them as well. <clears throat> um, so I, I do have just a couple more things if you want to go over them or, you know, we can stop because it was a great wrap up. But <laughs> yeah, okay. I, th I thought we were done. My apologies. Uh, go ahead. Yeah, absolutely. Go ahead and continue. No, it's okay. Um, the only other things that I was going to mention were, so for example, under that bell icon, there's been a lot of work and focus on, on cleaning that up and making those alerts that you receive um, as accurate as possible and as informational as possible, being able to jump to a project that's being mentioned, being able to have um, notices come out from the administrative side in there, which is like that broadcast message as an example. Um, so there's some work being done there. Uh, scroll bars are looking better. So lots of things happening. A couple new networks were added and we'll continue adding more networks. Kronos and Pulse Chain are now in the list. Um, we can add more. What we decided was even before we have all the information like we do for the Binance contracts, like the links out to BSC scan and PooCoin, you know, Ethereum, we can we'll be able to link out to etherscan.io so you can look at the contract, et cetera. Even before we know all of those details about net networks, we're starting to add those networks to the list for people to be able to see. And then one last thing, if you go to, to any project that's already been voted on, so you might wanna just filter for um, launched projects. So hopefully we can hit one that's already yeah. been launched. Uh, which is it in the here? In the advanced, yeah. Has, has launched. launched. Okay. So let's go to one of those projects and uh, go to where the voting section is on one of those projects. Right, should I narrow the field or doesn't matter? Uh, I don't think it matters. As long as there's some votes on it. I might have to click a couple to find one with votes. Yeah, I narrow it down to green and purples. Okay, go ahead. Okay. So go ahead and select any any project. Hopefully we have one that has 51 votes on it. So if you scroll down, you'll see the voting section. So right now, because this is an admin uh, user, you won't necessarily see what, what everybody will see. The votes will not all be listed out. So you can see with that red one, it is anonymous. There is no um, avatar next to it. Person doesn't know who that came from. Most people will now just see that summary that's at the top and won't see all of the votes until they get to green ranked voter. So that was another one of those um, things that was added was that kind of summary section at the top of these votes. It says how many votes and, and the different durations are, are selectable. You'll be able to see that, but you may see a filter on the right hand side that says, by the way, until you get to uh, green ranked voter, you're not going to see all of the votes. Well, so the reasoning for that, just so everybody knows, is another one of these. Um, we saw historically people were getting a lot of vetter for voting, which you know is different now, but they would just go on to a project that already had votes, not even do any research and see, oh, there's a bunch of greens. I'll just vote green and, and collect some better. So now um, rather than having that kind of pile on mentality where we're more than a certain number of votes on a given project, you'll notice that the impact says five in that summary. That person's score is only impacted by up to plus or minus five points. 
So having more votes on this particular project is not necessarily helpful. So it's nice to, to just not see how everybody else has voted so we can get some more thought process behind the votes and to be able to get voting spread across more projects where it'll actually um, be more useful, be more helpful uh, in terms of having more projects get voted on instead of just finding a project that somebody has voted a certain way on and, and you just kind of tag along. Does that make sense, Mike? Yeah, I'm gonna say, that I'm right? gonna, yeah I'll, I'll summarize that another way just, just to help those that are still kind of wrapping their head around all of this. So this is showing this impact five is showing that all of these votes and you know this, you know, at least by vote standards, this was a successful project. Uh, and we're doing auditing to make sure that that's the case and making corrections to all of this to make sure that's the case. But this is showing that the impact was plus five. So that this was a successful project based on the votes and uh, you can't do better than get a plus five vote. And this plus five vote impacts your ranking. It impacts your total ranking, uh, you know, as a scout. Um, and it, what Jeremy's also saying is, you'll notice that there was just this massive amount of votes um, that takes it way past, way past a, a plus five score. So most of these votes were unnecessary to arrive at the system knowing it was a plus five vote. So one of the things we're doing with, you know, uh, playing around with, you know, how much is compensated to voters from the participatory pool to how many times do we let somebody vote in a day and make that better from the participatory pool? Like all these incentives that we have for people to help post projects, but also vote properly, which again is being audited and systems are being improved there, being uh, to, to represent so that the project's voting in the, pro in the ranking system properly represents, you know, someone's historic track record. Uh, what we're doing is, is, is setting it up so that we don't waste a bunch of votes because this was a lot of money spent from the vetter pool, all these votes that was unnecessary. And we knew we would have to cross through this period of like, okay, how do we calibrate things? So we're not seeing like 50 some votes on a project in order to determine, yeah, it was successful and it deserves a plus five, five score towards their ranking. Uh, you know, we don't need this many votes. Jeremy, about how many votes would we need if they're almost unanimously positive? Just five? Uh, yeah, I mean, technically not even at five for a 24 hour duration because of the waiting, but. So we only but need yeah. a few, you just don't need that many votes if everyone's voting unanimously. We don't mind if there's some excess, right? It can't be perfect in terms of having the exact number of people voting the exact number of times that you want. But there are things that we can do to significantly increase it so that if a project is wildly successful, um, we're only getting you know, about the number of votes that we need to know that. And if a project's a rug pull or definitely a bad project that failed, we only need you know, a few votes to indicate that. So we're not wasting a bunch of vetter. So a lot of the changes that you've seen recently to the amount that we're paying voters and, and scouts and stuff, is all while we're reeling that in, we're auditing things, and we're you know setting up a framework to be able to accomplish that, so that the vetter that's in the participatory pool and 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 vetter pool that is there to create the incentive for people to post great projects to the calendar, for people to vote properly, you know, so that that vetter that's in those pools is used to bring to increase value for the project, and that isn't just being wasted unnecessarily. Yeah, so that I mean, I think that covers the the, the major changes. So, so now I'm done. Sorry. Awesome. About that. Okay. Okay. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you again, Jeremy, and thanks for today and going over all of this. Obviously, more upgrades coming, um, guys. We'll just leave it right there. We're not going to open this up to questions and answers because we're going to share this with the community. We, you know, when someone sees a two-hour video, they're less apt, apt to even listen to the first five minutes. However, we do have an AMA where you can ask us anything coming up. I'm not sure what time that is, just look at the at the calendar that we posted recently. It's been posted everywhere. I'm sure if you're here, you guys have seen it. Uh, there's an AMA coming up and that's where you can ask anything, including questions that might've come up today. So with that said, guys, uh, extremely excited, obviously, for the reasons that I just shared a little while ago. And uh, I can't be more impressed with, with how this has been developed by uh, the dev team. It's absolutely incredible. Uh, super excited to, to start using it and, uh, and start, uh, sharing you know how i'm using it 
I, I hope to see more people in the community also sharing how they're using it. Uh, you know, a lot of communities have YouTube videos from lots of different people, people out there sharing how they're doing things. I mean, I, 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 I used this example earlier today. There's a, a gaming token, a gaming system called Gods Unchained. And I see people all over the internet on YouTube jumping up and down how they made $5 today or they made you know, $15 in a, in a couple of hours where we have, have a lot of people so far who've made a lot more than that. Even though I don't want that to be the focus, there, there, there's so, I mean, and you look at this gain like a 30X and, and, and then somebody got a tip for 30,000 better. You know, it's pretty impressive. And, and you can imagine when the following feature comes, you know, uh, obviously, this was a very successful project for this person. Imagine if they had 100 people following them, you know, and 20 of them got in on this, you know, and, and how much tips are going to get. Like, there's so many great things to talk about. So I'm looking forward to not just getting, you know, the marketing going to get more people aware of what this DAP does, but also see a lot more people in the community sharing just all these amazing features. Uh, it's absolutely incredible. And there's a lot to talk about. Anyway, thanks again, uh, Jeremy. Thank you again. Dev team may be listening into the replay. Fantastic job. And thank you uh, to the community who are spending the time helping make this an amazing project. Uh, so uh, we'll keep you guys posted. Follow the schedule closely. Lots of uh, sessions still coming up. We'll see you guys soon. Have a fantastic rest of your day, everybody.